was an incarcerated uh, supramilical hernia. Uh, the neck of the hernia sac uh, wasn't as large as I was anticipating, but there was quite a bit of momentum stuck up within it and sort of had that hourglass type of configuration where the, the defect was larger above the um, hernia ring. And the tissue around the hernia ring looked thinned out and fairly weak, and so I chose the uh, large size rebound HRDV to make this repair, and uh, I think I had adequate coverage with the device. I used six uh, fascial anchor sutures uh, for the procedure, and uh, you can see what we did is after we got the sutures placed, uh, uh, deciflated the abdomen prior to tiring, tightening the sutures, and didn't tie them real tight, just to snug, um, you know, want to strangle the tissue. I think that's where a lot of the post-operative discomfort comes from if you tie them too tight. And then after the sutures are all tied, then reinsufflated to check the uh, position, and uh, everything looked good. Had good apposition of the uh, periphery of the device uh, circumferentially, and also then uh, reinspected the uh, uh, device as we desufflated completely to make sure there was no uh, uh, gaps or buckling of the, the edges of the device, which which there wasn't. And so I was very pleased with the uh, with the overall outcome. I think the patient will do well. took about an hour, um, and uh, at least half of that was uh, related to the uh, dissecting out the incarcerated omentum and uh, getting the site prepared for placement of the device. Once that was completed, uh, the uh, placement, uh, positioning, and anchoring of the device uh, went, went fairly quickly, and that whole process probably only took uh, 20 minutes or so, um, which is uh, a big time saving over the way that uh, we've done these in the past, where you have to unfurl the mesh. and. Uh, pull up the corners of the mesh and get it you know, positioned and smoothed out and then uh, put in the tacks and, and do all the other anchoring sutures. So I think from a, from a time standpoint, this is a, a big improvement and uh, made the procedure go much faster. And in the end, I think we've got a much nicer repair. The mesh is smooth and flat. It lays uh, perfectly over the, the defect the way we like it to. Um, it's easy to reposition or align the uh, device uh, anywhere you want it once you plate that centering suture and got that pulled up to the abdominal wall. Uh, it's very easy to uh, adjust your position and uh, make put it uh, um, in the optimal uh, alignment for the de defect and for the for the patient's uh, particular situation. So, the type of mesh that is employed is a condensed PTFE that is laser cut and, uh, and macroporous, and what that uh, does is it allows us to visualize the defect through the mesh so that we can be sure that uh, the uh, overlap is sufficient. Uh, we can center the uh, uh, device over the defect and uh, you know at all times uh, uh, what your position is. Some of the other meshes are so opaque and thick that uh, once you put it up over the defect you're not sure if it's centered and how close you are to the edge and uh, that can be problematic of course for uh, having recurrences. Um, and that's a nice feature of this mesh, and then being PTFE, since we're using the on-light technique, um, it's a, a good choice uh, because it's going to be in contact with the viscera, and uh, we know that uh, the adhesions that do form, uh, if they form to PTFE, tend to be the kinder, gentler adhesions and uh, not the problematic ones that you can see from the polypropylene or some of the other meshes. Another nice feature of the Rebound HRDV is the fact that it does have the nitinol frame, which is radio opaque. And so what we'll do is we'll have a standing uh, posterior to anterior PA of the abdomen uh, x-ray taken uh, shortly after surgery, uh, either later today or tomorrow. And this will uh, give us a uh, reference point for the uh, position of the device. And should there be any question in the future as to uh, uh, shifting or any change or question about uh, the device itself, uh, we can take a follow-up x-ray and have that for comparison purposes. Um, this is a feature that's not really uh, uh, optional with any other type of the ventral hernia repairs. Uh, you can see the tacks are stapled, but you never know if the mesh is separated from uh, the tacks or staples. And uh, with the frame uh, being uh, securely uh, sewn to the mesh, we know that if the frame is okay, the mesh will be okay. So that's a nice option to have.